call this meeting to, to order. It is uh, 603. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum uh, today. We have Mr. Petro Kennedy that just walked in, Dr. Jaime Rodriguez, Mr. Andrew Gonzalez, Mr. Erasmo Lopez, and Coach Armando Cuer, and myself, Mr. Nieto. Opening prayer, Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, the invocation will be delivered by Wesco East High School Campus Instructional Facilitator, Mrs. Belon, Belen Torres, and she is here. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Would you please bow your heads? We begin this evening by asking you, Heavenly Father, and thanking you for the many blessings and favor you have given us. We want to thank you for the great start to a new school year. We ask that you supply all of the needs of our students, their families, and our community. We also ask this evening that you continue to guide and grant wisdom to our school board, our superintendent, our school leaders, and stakeholders of West Laco ISD. We ask that your angels encamp around our students, our schools, and our community. Please keep our students, teachers, and staff safe as they go throughout their instructional day. We also ask that your protection be with our students, coaches, and sponsors as they travel to and from the many games, activities, competitions, and community service projects planned throughout this school year. And finally, Lord, we thank you for the peace and success you have given us for the 2019-2020 school year. In your son Jesus' name we pray, and everybody says, amen. amen. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance uh, at Texas Pledge, Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, we do have uh, students here to lead us in the pledge, and Mr. Robledo will introduce them. Welcome. Okay, this evening, good morning, board. We have some members of the Wildcat Regiment. They could please stand up so we can introduce you to the audience. <clears throat> First, we have Andrea Perez. Andrea, can you please raise your hand so everybody knows who you are? Y'all can face the crowd. <laughs> okay, so Andrea is the daughter of Flor Estela Betran and Juan Miguel Perez, and she is a senior at West Laco East High School. Andrea is the head drum major for the award-winning Wildcat Regiment. Andrea qualified for the All-Region Symphonic Band as a clarinetist this past year. Andrea has been a member of the West Laco East Honors Wind Ensemble for the past three consecutive years. Andrea plans to major in music education and attend the University of Texas at San Antonio in the fall of 2020. How about a big hand for Ms. Perez? <laughs> and if her parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Are your parents here? We also have with us here today Michaela Moreno, who is the daughter of Jose Moreno and Valerie Garza, and she is a junior at West Laco East High School. Michaela is the first assistant drum major for the Wildcat Regiment. Michaela has participated in the annual Texas Solo and Ensemble Contest and has earned a Division I rating. She is a member of the West Laco East French Club and has also received an award. She is currently a top 10 student for the class of 2021. How to be hand for Michaela Moreno. And if her parents are here, can they please stand to be recognized? Parents? No parents? No parents. Okay. And we also have uh, Adriana Moreno, the daughter of Nelson Moreno and Yesenia Camacho, who is a senior at West Laco East High School. Andrea is a second assistant drum major for the Wildcat Regiment. Andrea is a member of the National Honor Society and plans to attend the University of Texas at Dallas and major in neuroscience in the fall of 2020. How about a big hand? All right, will everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies, if you want to face the flag, and whenever you're ready, you can get us started. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one individual. All right. Thank you very much. No public comments today.
Thank you. Uh, let the record reflect that Dr. Richard Rivera walked in at the beginning of the meeting. Dr. Rivera, welcome. Uh, awards and recognitions, Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, we have several awards and recognitions from our students to our staff. Mr. Robledo will take us through the first one. Mr. Robledo. Yes. Well, tonight we want to, first of all, recognize several students who took part in the AP exams. If they could please enter the room. Mm -hmm. That would be half of them. Okay. I'll announce it in a minute. I'll announce it after this. We want to recognize several high school students who recently received academic recognition on the national level. The College Board Advanced Placement Program recently recognized several of our students for their exceptional achievement on the AP exams. These students took part in college level courses while still in high school to earn college credit, advanced placement, or both. A small percentage of the millions of students worldwide who took the AP exams performed at a sufficiently high level to earn AP Scholar Award. AP scholars completed three or more AP exams with scores of three or higher in subjects that include biology, chemistry, world history, and English literature. So as I say your name, if you could please step forward so we could recognize you. Uh, and we do have several students that are not here because some of them graduated already and they're already in college. But we're going to recognize them anyway. First, we'll start off with uh, scholars from West Loco East High School. AP scholars are Victoria Guerrero. Is she here? Victoria? <laughs> Silvestre Ramirez. <laughs> Mateo Vallejo. <laughs> Soraida Castillo. Not here. Andrea Cruz. <laughs> Elizabeth Fabela. Karen Lopez, Victoria Mena, Humberto Romo, Kayla Saldana, Eva Torres, and we also have an AP Scholar with Honor Award, and that goes to Angie Escalon. And we do have also from West Lacuse an AP Scholar with Distinction Award, Ana Lisa Salinas. <laughs> if their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. <laughs> okay. Now we have some also AP Scholars from West Laco High School. As I say your name, if you could please step forward. Andrea Aranda. <laughs> Roquel Moreno. <laughs> Caitlin Cantu. <laughs> Eddie Castillo. <laughs> Annette Garcia. <laughs> Fabian Gonzalez. <laughs> Brian Lowe. Cody Molina, Maria Ontiveros, Gabriela Sainz, Kathleen Trevino, Elizabeth Villanueva, Mia R. Cavazos. We also have five students who earned AP Scholar with Distinction Award. These students had an average score of at least 3.5 on all AP exams taken and scored a three or higher on five or more exams. And these students are Daniela Maldonado, <laughs> Zuriel Martes, <laughs> Josh Rodriguez. We also have two more students. I know they're not here, Pedro uh, Castorena and Brianna Miranda. How about a big hand for them? <laughs> if the AP scholars from West Local High School, their parents, could they please stand and be recognized? Parents, if they're here, please stand. <laughs> Thank you very much and congratulations. You may exit out this way.
Okay. So let's move on to the next recognition. We have several members of the uh, Boys State who are here. Can they please come out to be recognized? These are members from Westlaco High School and Westlaco East High School. So several high school students spent their summer forming political parties and passing laws as part of the 2019 American Legion Texas Boy State Leadership Conference. Our West Local ISD delegates were selected on a highly competitive basis and spent a week at UT Austin this summer. The Texas Boys State Conference was held June 9th through the 14th at the University of Texas at Austin. The conference offers a unique learn by doing environment where our delegates run for many state, district, county, and city offices representing fictional political parties. Let us recognize these Boys State delegates from West Laco High School, Noah McGinnis. Please step forward. We also have Peyton Voss. <laughs> Tehran Salceda. <laughs> Zuriel Martez. <laughs> Michael Aviles. <laughs> we also have from West Laco East High School, Joel Ramos. And we also have Mario Trevino, who is not here right now, but we are proud to announce that Mario was nominated as a can candidate for the Office of Governor at Texas Boys uh, State. How about a big hand for him? Okay, if anybody wants to take some pictures, now is your opportunity. Now we'd like to announce our girl state delegates, if they can please come out so they can be recognized. How about a big hand as they enter the room? Several high school students were part of the Texas Blue Bonnet Girl State Conference this summer. These young ladies traveled to Texas Lutheran University campus in Seguin, where they formed cities, adopted charters, and elected city officials. Representing West Local High School, Alexi Gonzalez. <laughs> Kaylee Martinez. Kaylee. Uh, Lauren Lasso. <laughs> Zoe Pena. <laughs> Kirsten Padilla. <laughs> and also from West Local High School, but she's not here, Blaine Brunerman. From West Local East High School, we have two students here, Aitza Roque. And we also have Caroline Espinosa. Boy State and Girl State serve to empower young men and women to become community and civic leaders at all levels of government. And we are proud that these students are working toward becoming better citizens. If their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. Congratulations, girls. Great All right. Job. Okay. Okay. We still have some more recognitions we're going to get through here. And tonight we want to congratulate several of our schools for their tremendous success at the state. Uh, Texas Assessment of Academic Readiness Exams. Our academic performance continues to increase. And this year, Westlacote received a record 54 distinctions 
designations for the 2018-2019 school years. Our schools were compared to schools across the state according to size and type, and based on these comparisons, they received distinction designations in several categories. So as I say the name of the school, if you can please come forward, principals who are here. I'm sure you all are all here. And we're going to start off with West Laco High School, who received a distinction in science. West Laco High School, Ms. Morales. So let's move on. We'll go to the next one, CTE Early College High School, who received the distinction in post-secondary readiness. Up next, we have a school here, West Laco East High School, two distinctions, mathematics and science. We would also like to recognize another school, two distinctions in science and social studies, Mary Hogue Middle School. This school received a distinction in reading, mathematics, science, social studies, and post-secondary readiness, Armando Cuellar Middle School. This school received distinctions in reading, mathematics, science, social studies, and post-secondary readiness. Central Middle School. Picture. Picture. Who's going to take the picture? <laughs> Oh, she's right there. Okay. Now let's take a look at our elementary schools. This school received a distinction in science, Rico Elementary. Another elementary school who received a distinction in science, Dr. Margo Elementary. This elementary school received a distinction in academic growth, Gonzales Elementary. Okay. This elementary school received a distinction in reading, mathematics, Post-secondary readiness, Airport Drive Elementary. Yes. 
This campus received uh, distinctions in reading, mathematics, academic growth, and post-secondary readiness, Silva Elementary. This campus received distinctions in mathematics, academic growth, post-secondary readiness, comparative closing the gap, Sam Houston Elementary. Our last elementary schools received all six out of six distinctions in reading, art, uh, uh, mathematics, science, academic growth, comparative closing the gap, and post-secondary read readiness. So receiving six out of six distinctions, these schools are, we'll start off with Kleckler Held Elementary. Another school, six out of six distinctions, Memorial Elementary. <laughs> Another elementary school, six out of six distinctions, North Bridge Elementary. And we have another elementary school, six out of six distinctions, and that goes to Mario Ibarra Elementary. School. We'd like to recognize West School High School received a distinction in science. Ms. Morales. Just stand up where we're at. I think we can just stand up in the back. Yeah, as long as it towards the center. Stand in the middle with us. Hold on. Hold down. Hold on. Hold on. We're still filing in. Okay, back here. Ready. Carlos. <coughs> Dr. Rivera, would you like to say a few comments for the principals for the recognition? Do 
to say that <clears throat> it's an outstanding job. There are a lot of a lot of people involved, from the parents, the students, the staff, your teachers, <coughs> all of you. So we're very very proud, and uh, keep up the good work. Dr. Jaime, any uh, comments? Uh, just like Dr. Rivera said, you know, a lot of a lot of people involved, and congratulations on on all the accomplishments and. Uh, keep up the good, the, the good work there. Thank you. Mr. Kennedy. I just want to say uh, for the public, these people, these principals and the teachers uh, and the, all the administrative staff and support staff, they put in so many hours of work that these plaques that we've given them tonight, uh, they, they can't truly represent the amount of hard work that goes into uh, teaching students and, and helping to raise the children who are our future. So congratulations and thank you so much for all your hard work. Coach Quayle? Um, same sentiments, uh, outstanding. It's always good to see that uh, we're second to none and outstanding job. Congratulations. Mr. Lopez, I didn't get the question, but I know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I congratulate and salute each and every one of, of your teachers, principals, and all our staff for such a good uh, good job and keeping up, keep it going. I mean, you guys are on the right track, and Dr. Canales, you've uh, you've got us on the right on the right track. And and, and uh, all I can see is just things getting better for WISD, and and then uh, leave, we, we leave everybody behind, second to none. <laughs> so congratulations again, all of you. All. But wait, there's more. Uh, and of as course, I, say on TV. <laughs> I know that. Uh, let me just say a couple of things to the principals. Uh, outstanding job every, every year. Our district has improved the distinctions uh, under the leadership of uh, Dr. Canales and her staff at Central Office. So, quite, quite an ac accomplishment, especially uh, working together. But this year was very good with 54 distinctions. So, now our goal next year is probably about 65. You know, uh, we always got to get better. It's just like 90, 90 okay, <laughs> 90. That's a that's a, a hefty goal. But principals, outstanding job. Uh, take it back to your staff. Uh, the teachers did an outstanding job this year. And of course, looking into data, a lot of you principals are looking into data more. And so now you kind of understand what needs to be done in order to get those distinctions. And a, a couple of schools that I want to make a comment on. Uh, Mr. Buttermer's school and uh, Mrs. Hernandez for that six out of six coming from the prior year getting one or two, but also the five schools that got six out of six. That's outstanding. Uh, I know that the rest of the elementary schools and the high schools can improve and the middle schools, and I know they will improve because we have some good leader, leaders at each campus. So again, outstanding job. Well, no, very good job. Maybe next year I can say outstanding. Right, Dr. Rivera? That's right. Yes, sir. Let me just think. Okay. Mr. Uh, Gonzalez? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I came in late. I had fatherly duties picking up my son, but uh, congratulations to all of you. Really, thank you for all your hard work. Uh, nothing that we can say or do up here, truly everything you guys do is unbelievable. Unbelievable, and I'm, I'm proud to be y'all's representative out in the community. So, again, thank you for all y'all hard work. Thank you. Okay, Carlos, continue. Yes, we do have a few more recognitions uh, in relations to the STAR test that was administered last year. And several campuses received the grade letter of an A. And we are very proud of these schools and we want to congratulate them, the faculty and staff, and most importantly, the students. Scores, uh, scores pertaining to student achievement, scores, uh, school progress and closing the gaps were calculated to give each campus an accountability score of A through F. And we do have schools that received A's. And we're going to start off with Kleckler Held Elementary. Congratulations. Good job. Outstanding. <laughs> Another school receiving an A. 
Sam Houston Elementary. Another school to receive an A, Memorial Elementary. We do have another school that received an A. They do not receive any distinctions, but they do receive a letter grade, and they received an A, South Palm Gardens High School. Dr. Rivera, any comments on the schools that received A's? Again, outstanding. And uh, to get an A takes a lot of work, a lot of effort, and uh, just a challenge for everyone else, all the other schools that made a B. The challenge is there. So good, good job again to all of you. B's are also outstanding. And just a challenge to the whole, the whole uh, all the principals, the superintendent, the staff, I know you were shooting for an A district-wide. You got a B, so that's, that's still very good work. And the challenge for next year is to get us that A. Thank you. Mr. Lopez? I, I just want to say that, uh, yes, uh, the A's, uh, it's, it's a lot of hard work. I witnessed it firsthand, uh, and, and I saw, and I hear the principals and, and it's like, like they, they wake up, they eat it, they, they sleep it. They, they're always talking school, students, classes, work, 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 you know, and, and then they fall asleep. So, so I just want to say that you guys have, have worked very hard, A's, B's, all of you all worked very hard to, to get us where we're at today. And, and I know that better things are coming. And... Um, we're just very proud of, of what you all have done, and, uh, and I know you all will make us even prouder when we get the A next year, and uh, everything's going to be like the sun, and everything's going to be like real <laughs> perfect. So thank you all so much for all your, your hard work and your dedication to our students and uh, the future, because that's what it is. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Coach Quer, Coach Quer. Same sentiments, you know, just uh, my uh, sincere <coughs> appreciation and, and thank you for the outstanding job that y'all do. Uh, we're here to support er, er, every effort and, uh, you know, the results speak for themselves. Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Kennedy. Um, we're proud of you. I mean, really are proud of you. We're proud of your staff. Uh, we're proud of your students. Please let them know. Uh, that the board is behind them and that we're very proud of them. Dr. Ivey. Uh, congratulations and uh, thank you for, for all the hard work y'all have done and, and for, for those schools that didn't get that A this year. You know, we know what we need to do and, and we're going to shoot for that A and keep on working hard and striving for that. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, again, congratulations to all of you. Um, 88.3. We're almost there, you know, as a district. 
you know, kudos to all of you. You know, no C campuses, correct? Not one C campus. Not one C campus, and not everybody can say that. And so kudos to you guys, really, honestly. Congratulations. Uh, keep up the great work. So we had a four A's this year, Dr. Canales? Yes. So four A's, so next year we should have about eight. I know there was two campuses that were at 89.3 or four, and we had two other ones with 87s. And I think working together uh, alongside Dr. Canales and, of course, Mrs. Peterson and Mr. Aguilar, uh, working with them, I, I believe the next year we can get eight campuses uh, to get A's. Now, it's going to be hard for those four A's to retain it again, but I believe those other ones that are in B's, I think it's doable for next year. So, again, congratulations. Okay. Um, tonight we want to call, uh, congratulate a principal for being selected as a Texas Association of Secondary School Principals Region 1 Outstanding School Principal of the Year. This association recognizes exemplary principals and assistant principals from the 20 Region Education Ser Service Centers in the state. And he was nominated and chosen by his peers within Region 1 and was selected for this distinction based on exemplary performance and outstanding leadership. And that principal is Mary Hogue Middle School Principal Pablo Vallejo. Congratulations. <laughs> have a proclamation okay a proclamation uh, uh, let's let's see no it's next yeah. mr. Vallejo yes. good job again uh, I had the pleasure to work with mr. Vallejo for four years at Mary Hogue Middle School many years ago but I continue the outstanding job uh, at Mary Hogue Middle School congratulations again <laughs> we have a uh, item number seven proclamation of National Security Officer Appreciation Week, September 16th through the 20th, Dr. Canales. This is National Security Officer Appreciation Week, and we are very appreciative of all our security officers. Many of them are here this evening. Thank you for being here. We salute you, and now the proclamation. If y'all can please stand and be recognized. How about a big hand for security officers? security officers as I read this proclamation to recognize you. Whereas National Security Officer Appreciation Week will be celebrated at WISD during the week of September 16th through the 20th and whereas security officers are hardworking, highly trained individuals who are often our country's first responders and whereas these individuals deter crime, lead evacuations, work closely with local law enforcement and constantly are vigilant in their efforts to keep us safe. Therefore, let it be resolved that Isidoro Nieto, WSD School Board President, does hereby support and proclaim September 16th through September 20th, 2019 as National Security Officer Appreciation Week. Congratulations on this recognition. Dr. Canales, you want to say anything about the, our security personnel? Just amazing, always there for the staff, for the students, for each other, helping to make our district great. We feel safe, we see, feel secure in your presence, and with that, 
all our children can soar. So we salute you. Thank you for the energy and the love that you give to our district. Anybody want to uh, add some comments on my right? Absolutely. Appreciate you guys. A lot of you I personally worked with for many, many years, and I know the kind of work you do and the hours that you put in. So to that, uh, kudos. I mean, you guys do an outstanding job and always uh, have always kept uh, the welfare and the safety of our uh, uh, students and administration first and foremost, and I thank you very much for that. Mr. Lopez. Yes, I, I want to thank you all also for all your, all your work. I, I don't know each and every one of you all personally, but I, the ones that I do know um, are, are professional. They're, they're, they're great. They're great people, and, and, uh, and they know how to take care of our schools. I mean, you guys are, 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 are wonderful, and, and not only taking care of our schools, but taking care of, the, of everything. I mean, you guys are in the front lines. You all are, are all over. Because I know that whenever there's something going on, y'all are right there. So thank y'all for, for being there, for taking care of our kids, taking care of our teachers, and uh, our principals also. You know, so thank y'all for, for always being there for us. Thank you so much. I appreciate your work. I know in times like today, it's very difficult. The world around has changed a lot, and your job is even more important now, taking care of our schools, our students, our, our teachers, our staff, everyone. So keep up doing an, an, uh, a good job that you do, and I'm very proud of all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy? I just want to say, uh, during this week, I hope that all staff members, students, and parents will take a moment to thank these security officers for what they do. When we're inside here or at a football game or at one of our events, they're the ones standing in the heat or in the rain, keeping watch over your cars, keeping watch over your kids when you're at home. And we can do the business of running a district and teaching children because they're outside taking care of us. They have to wear special shoes because they're standing guard all day. And I'm sure they go home with hurt feet and, uh, and are tired, yet they're there day after day. So take a moment to say thank you during this week for them. And so thank you from me to you. Again, uh, thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. Um, I don't know uh, all of you all, but the ones that I do know, uh, extremely professional, hardworking, uh, truly appreciate what you do and for keeping us all safe, uh, our students, our teachers, Anybody, you know, I see you guys, I see you guys at uh, events in the evenings, on the weekends, long hours, but it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez. Again, thank you. I, I think we all shared here uh, how important you are to our district. We truly do appreciate some of you I went to school with, uh, some of you I got to work with when I was in the school district. Uh, and so just knowing that you guys are there and ladies are there at night, the late nights, uh, early mornings, we really truly do appreciate all that you do for our kids, our teachers, and the rest of the staff. So again, thank you. Enjoy this week. Uh, and like Patrick said, please reach out to them because they really, really do a marvelous job of keeping us safe. So thank you for all you do. And, and of course, uh, thank you because I know several of you that I have worked with I know some of you have worked for over 35 years. A couple of you have worked over 35 years as security guards. But uh, you take the initiative to keep all our staff safe, you know, especially our, our students. So congratulations again. Uh, but you have to work that week, September 16th to the 20th. Is, you know, just, uh, <laughs> all right. Superintendent's, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Superintendent's thank you. report, Dr. Canales. We have several items to report. I am going to begin with the star performance. A couple of things to highlight. Our district is a B plus. We earned 88 points. Uh, domain one, student achievement. All We had 16 campuses that increased. That is the 90, 60, 30. And we had two that maintained. So we had no regression in domain one. Domain two, relative performance was our strongest. We were at 91%. 
very, very proud of everybody in our entire district. Everybody has a role in the success of students. Our district was the only 6A school district in Hidalgo County where all campuses were A's or B's. So that's awesome. <laughs> Highlights for Wessico ISD. We had, we recognized four campuses that were an A. Distinction designations grew from 51 to 54. We had four campuses earning all eligible distinctions. We had South Palm Gardens with the high, highest score, maybe in the state, with 96% for an alternative education environment. And back to back, we have two years in a row where we have back to back campuses. Last year was Central Middle School, and this year we have Memorial Elementary. Our goals are high. You heard our principals earlier. We are shooting for 90%, 90 distinctions this school year. We, gave, we came so close to having so many more, and we believe that we can. We're going to give our best to hit the 90. Uh, regarding the domains, Mr. Elias Trevino is here to share briefly about the domains. We know them well, and um, we just wanted to highlight a few things about the domains before we moved on. Good evening, Dr. Canales, uh, Board President, Mr. Nieto, and Board members. Our current accountability system uh, consists of three domains, and Domain 1, Student Achievement. It provides a snapshot of all student performance across grades and subjects. Domain two, uh, school progress has two parts, and that is part A, academic growth, uh, which measures the amount of improvement or growth a student has made from year to year. And part B is relative performance, which measures the achievement of all students relative to districts or campuses with similar economically disadvantaged uh, percentages. And uh, domain three, closing the gaps, it demonstrates the differentials among racial, ethnic groups, socioeconomic backgrounds, and other factors. On the following slide, you will find uh, Wessico ISD's accountability overall summary. In domain one, student achievement, uh, Wessico ISD earned a score of 86 up from 78 the previous year, which earned a B rating. Domain two, school progress, part A, academic growth. We maintained the same uh, score as the previous year of a 79. But in Part B, relative performance, which was our highest uh, area, we earned a 91 up from an 88, which was an A for that domain. And finally, Domain 3, closing the gaps, we earned an 81 up from an 80 uh, for a rating of a B uh, with a methodology that the accountability system has. Overall, Wessex ISD earned an 88, which is a rating of a B. On the following page, you're going to uh, see a comparison of 2018 to 2019 uh, accountability. Uh, most, more, uh, most notably uh, is the green across the uh, chart represents the areas of growth. Uh, domain one, uh, you see a lot of green there. It's the same for part B relative performance uh, and also overall scale score. Uh, the yellow signifies the areas that we maintained. With respect to distinction designations, campuses that receive an accountability rating of A, B, C, or D are eligible to earn a distinction designation. And those de uh, designations are awarded uh, for achievement in several areas. These are earned when a campus performs at the top of their group of 40. And those 40 schools are grouped by type, size, uh, grade span, and student demographics. So in the following pages, uh, historically back in 2017, uh, this gives you an overview of the distinction designations uh, earned throughout the district for a total of 39. In uh, 2018, the accountability distinction uh, went up to a 51, and uh, we are happy to announce that this year we are at 54, and as was mentioned earlier, we truly believe, uh, this community believes that we will earn 90 distinctions. Good evening, uh, Mr. Nieto, Dr. Canales, members of the board. Just a brief recap with the elementary schools. Uh, you have their third grade reading. I want to uh, point out in the bottom, Westlaco ISD was above the region and the state, and all in green indicates growth. Uh, going to the next one on our math, third grade math, again, 
Wasuko ISD was, a, was above the region and the state. And again, you see the green where it indicates the growth with all the performance levels. Fourth grade reading, Wasuko ISD was above the region and the state. Again, the green indicates the growth. Yellow means we maintained it. Fourth grade math, Wasuko ISD was above the region and the state. The green indicates the growth. Fourth grade writing, this was a very significant improvement for us. We were above, Wessico ISD was above the region and the state, and the green indicates growth in all the performance levels. Fifth grade reading, Wessico ISD was above the region and the state, the green indicates the growth. Fifth grade math, Wessico ISD was above the region and the state, and the green indicates the growth with the yellow maintaining. Fifth grade science, Wessico ISD was, was above the region and the state, the green and the yellow, coarse green growth, and yellow we maintained it. Okay, continuing on with the secondary schools and sixth grade reading, you'll see growth in all three performance areas. In sixth grade math, again, growth in all three performance areas across the board. Seventh grade reading, you have growth in the approaches. Seventh grade math, growth across the board in all three areas, scoring above the state and the region. Seventh grade writing, we are near the state and the region and had growth in approaches and masters. Eighth grade reading, we are above the state, had significant increase and increases across and meets approaches, meets and masters. In eighth grade math, we are above the region and the state. And again, you see growth across all three areas. Eighth grade science, we are above the region and the state. Eighth grade social studies, we are above the region and the state we maintained in that area. In algebra one, uh, we had some struggles this past year with some uh, staff issues, but we'll recover from that. And now that Ms. Lopez can focus on secondary because we've added an elementary math strategist, I have no doubt we'll see changes here. In biology, we had gains across in all three performance areas, and also we are scoring above the region and just slightly behind the state. U.S. history, we maintained at 86. English one, we had a 10-point growth, and we also had growth in approaches, meets, and masters, all three performance areas, scoring at the region. In English two, we had growth in meet approaches and meets. We maintained in masters, and we are scoring right at the region. And those are the per star performance scores that led to all of the plaques that you saw earlier this evening. Hi, I do have a question. It seems like last year, uh, I remember we talked about the star coming back, and we wanted to focus on, I guess, the reading and language arts improvement. Mm -hmm. And this year, you can see the numbers, there have been an improvement. Um, what do you think was implemented over the course of this past year that led to those kind of improvements? Last year was the first year that we had an elementary and a math strategist full time. I mean, an elementary and a, and a secondary yeah. language arts strategist full time. Full um, Dr. Lopez had started the semester the year before. So full time at both levels with a strategist. And also we did a lot of curriculum writing in English one and two uh, over the summer last a year ago and ensured that that was implemented at the high schools this past year. Uh, in the summer of 2019, we did a lot of curriculum writing for the middle schools in language arts, and so we anticipate seeing the gain there this well, coming year. Well, it's good. I remember you, you came before the board and you said you really wanted to focus on it, and I wanted to let you know that I didn't forget it, and you pulled it off, and so I want to say <laughs> thank you. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Lopez receives the, all the credit for the secondary schools along with very hard work from our secondary campuses. Well, good job. <laughs> Dr. Rivera, any comments on that? Uh, really, very good work. But I have one question. Have you all pinpointed, you were in 89 last year as a district, and great yes. job to all the schools, B's and A's, tremendous. But now you're in 88, one point lower. Have you calculated where it was, where you need to go to get to that, that 90 or higher? Have you all yeah. kind of looked at, at yeah. figures, at numbers? I just want to make, make a correction, Dr. Uh, 
Rivera, uh, actually last year we were in 86. Ah, 86. 86. 86. So we've gone up, uh, I thought you were 89 last year. No, 86. Yes. Okay. We wanted to be. <laughs> okay. I we thought, you know, well, okay. We do know what we have to work on, though. Okay. Yes, so. so, okay. Yeah. So I thought you had gone down a point. No, okay. Okay, well, Neither of the my, my mistake then. I thought again, 89 to 88, what happened? So, and the, the but you went up. Yes. And the I guess I saw the paper. Maybe the monitor had those results they have it where they had all the schools listed. Uh oh, we but anyway, check that. But anyway. They don't like us. Oh, no. Again, <laughs> don't, don't, I'm not negative, but just good job. But work where it is, and you need to get to that A, the 90. Yeah. And like Mr. Kennedy mentioned, you know, uh, yes, we saw a lot of results in those areas, but also in the meets and masters, we, we saw uh, double digits. Well, I always look at double digits, you know, when you have, especially in the masters, and especially with the new accountability, you receive points for getting meets or getting masters versus approaches. So that's an area that the principals will also work on to let those students know that, hey, we want you to get masters because in the end, it's going to affect all WISD. Any other comments, Dr. Jaime? No, uh, just real quick. You know, we're we're here for for support. You know, so whatever whatever is needed to to continue this growth, it's a common theme. We're growing, and and you know, whatever is needed from us, you know, please please let us know. Mr. Lopez. Yes, I just want to say that uh, you know I've been on the board now for ten years, and uh, up until probably maybe how long have you been here, Dr. Canales? Three. Three years. Three years ago. The word data almost never came up. And um, and you all have, I mean, I hear the word data every day now. <laughs> so um, apparently it's a very important word that you all, you all use and you, you decipher and you put together and analyze and, and scrutinize and <laughs> it's working, you know, so. Uh, I'm glad, Dr. Canales, you, you brought that uh, that whole thing, and, and I know that you all have lots of meetings because I know. And uh, just keep up the good work, guys. Call them huddles now. It's a huddle. There you go. <laughs> so keep up the good work, and, and I'm very proud of each and every one of you guys for 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 moving up. You know, a little bit at a time, but we'll get there. We're we're almost there, but we'll get that A. So thank you all for your hard work, Abel, Ms. Peterson. Yes, and everybody else involved. Mr. Gonzalez, or Coach Goyer, anything? Uh, it's kind of, go ahead, Coach. Yeah, no, yeah. I just, uh, it's a continuous thing, you know. It's uh, the results speak for themselves. And, you know, any any time that anybody ever said anything about whatever was, was, was going on, on the, on the playing field, I just look back up and say, look at the scoreboard. <laughs> well, we're looking at a very, very positive scoreboard right there. So great job. Great job. Congratulations. Gonzalez. Gonzalez. I think you need to start left and then go to the right next time. <laughs> By the time I, you get I, to me, I, everybody gets to say I everything, I all alternate. the good stuff. Okay. <laughs> but again, uh, Dr. Canales, uh, the team you have truly put together and understanding how to achieve is, is an amazing feat. Because the one thing I heard three years ago was how poorly we were, how bad it was here. And you and your team have done an outstanding job along with all our principals and teachers and the rest of the staff. And piggyback on Dr. Rodriguez, if something is missing, bring it to our attention so we can get it. Our kids deserve it. So thank you for all y'all's hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. For the next section of the report, we have Kleckler Held Elementary School, who initiated, went after a grant, and did get it to make sure that our children are fit and that it supports our complete educational program here in Wessico ISD. Ms. Vanderbeer, welcome. Good evening, uh, Mr. Board President, members of the board, Dr. Canales, Kleckler Held Elementary, Mr. McClenahan, Coach Mack, as we call him at Kleckler Held. We are proud to announce uh, that Kleckler Held was uh, awarded the Project Fit uh, The Project Fit uh, of America Award for $25,406. And this gentleman right here was the one that brought it to us. Thank you, Coach Mack. And just a couple of things. Uh, 
so that you can understand uh, what Project Fit is. Uh, not only was it Project Fit of America, but also the Valley Baptist uh, Legacy Foundation, which is here in Harlingen. Uh, they promote physical fitness, and they wanted to do this for uh, several schools. So there was 36 schools in the running, and uh, Kleckler Held was one of the selected ones, so we are so proud of that. We uh, received $25,000 worth of equipment, and I believe there's a photo here. Yes, one more. Right, maybe two more. There you, go. you can see that in the picture right there. Uh, we have a couple of, you know, when you go to the uh, park, you see a couple of, uh, a couple of, uh, things out there for for exercising and working out well that's what this is uh, it's still not fully completed but it will be completed by the end of september and most of it uh, are most of it is stations that are designed to improve children's upper arm and shoulder strength abdominal strength lower body strength and total body flexibility as well as cardiovascular fitness. So congratulations to Coach Mack, and thank you, Coach Mack, for bringing this to us. On November the 6th, we will have a, a groundbreaking. We are required by Project Fit of America and the Valley Baptist Legacy Foundation, uh, a, ground, a groundbreaking ribbon cutting ceremony, and we are inviting all of you in the community of West Saco to come celebrate with us. Thank you, Dr. Canales. Thank you. And members of the board. Thank congratulations. You. congratulations. Hold on. Get in the middle, Doc. <laughs> she might not come out. Who's in the middle? Next item. Okay. Enrollment and membership. Okay, this is just a board trustees. The two week enrollment, we're comparing 2019 to 2020. At 2019, we're at 17,117. Right now, we're at 16,894. That is a 223 difference. However, I do want to note that we have approximately 123 students from the um, ELF program missing from this data. They're still processing their paperwork. So when you account for them, it's 100 uh, student difference for enrollment. The good news is for ADA, we're ahead of where we were last year, two-week enrollment. Last year, we were at 15,901. This year, we're at 15,912, which is funding difference for ADA of 11. So that's um, enrollment and daily, oh. average daily attendance. What was our number that we budgeted at, the enrollment? 15,750, was that this? what you did, Mr. Sanchez? I thought it was in the 15,000s. So, yeah. so yes. we're, we're ahead of that. The 88? Yes. So the budget, 15,750. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, I drove by there today, and man, they're building uh, fourplexes and duplexes and all over the place. And then there's some more places in the back of, behind Mar I mean, behind Memorial. South. Mm -hmm. South of Memorial. And, and and we see no growth. Has, has anybody visited? Has, right. Have we well, Mr. Lopez, put up anything? It's, it's a great question. We do have a recruitment team. Mr. Garcia is leading a recruitment team that consists of Dr. Cantu and Mrs. Erica Garcia and others. And you do have a handout in front of you that talks about some of the things that we're doing to recruit students. We did last week recruit, get back 16 children from a charter school in our, in our area as part of the recruitment effort last week. So there's some uh, things that they're doing uh, in terms of getting information out. We have talking points. And in the handout, you also have flyers that we're leaving at doors. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're out there this year, and we will continue to be out there. Mr. Garcia has set a goal of bringing back 50 students, along with Mrs. Garcia and Dr. Cantu, this month. So we look forward to reporting that later on. Okay. 
I know that, uh, what was it, two years ago that we went out on school buses or something the like that? Block walks. We did the block so we, walks. When we did the block walks? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that had any effect. And uh, if it did, we need to possibly do it again. Okay. We can look at it, sir. Okay. Okay. And then for the next part of the report, we do have insurance. Correct. Mr. De La Rosa? Good evening, I, Dr. Canales, Mr. President. I didn't get a members. copy of either report. Do you have it with you, Andres? The enrollment or the insurance? I don't have a copy here. I can give you mine, sir. Yeah. I don't think anybody got we've, uh, we've hit the uh, end of our fiscal year for our self-funded employee uh, benefit program. So I'll just go over the, the light items uh, and I'll approximate as I usually do. So uh, this year in medical claims, we spent approximately $11.5 million uh, versus last year at 10.4. So that's an increase of uh, around $1.1, $1 $1.2 million. Uh, finally, the prescription drugs. Uh, this year we spent approximately $4.5 million versus last year at 3.4. Again, an additional $1.1 million. Our fixed cost stayed the same relatively as only $300,000 increase. Uh, that's due to the uh, increased uh, ISL or stop loss uh, premiums. So at the end of the year, we finished at $19.1 million. Uh, we have received approximately $638,000 of stop loss reimbursements. So as of right now, we're sitting at $18.4 million. So there's still going to be some run out over the next three months so we could, could potentially see some additional stop loss reimbursements. Moving on to the self-funded workers' compensation program. Again, we had a good year. A uh, number of claims we had this year was 105 versus last year, 113. Uh, we paid out uh, just under $200,000 this year versus last year of uh, 91,000. We still have approximately $87,000 left in reserves uh, for this fiscal year. And total incurred for the entire fiscal year is a 286825 as you can see that we've had had less claims, however, we had did have some severe claims. That's why you see the difference in the in the cost. Uh, if anybody has any questions. Questions on my left? Mr. No Gonzalez? Questions. No questions. No. I have not. On my right, Dr. Rivera? No. All right. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Thank, you. Thank you. Consent agenda? Gentlemen, look at the, see which ones uh, you need to pull. We're going to pull uh, item X, correct, Mr. Sanchez? Yes, sir. We're going to pull item X, okay. Any other ones that uh, you all need to discuss? Uh, on my left, Mr. Kennedy? No, sir. Mr. Dr. Jaime? No, sir. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez? No, sir, none. Dr. Rivera? Uh, no. But did we scale number five? Public comments, anyone sign up for it? No, no my mistake. Uh, there was none for public comments. Uh, I skipped that one, so it's, that's my mistake. So there was none uh, signed up for public comments. Uh, Mr. Lopez? No, I have nothing. None? Uh, Coach Quayer? No. And I don't have any. I move to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item X. Okay. Second. So I have a motion by uh, Mr. Patrick Kennedy and a second by Dr. Jaime to approve the consent agenda except for X. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right, let's go to item number 10, discussion items. Uh, a, interim financial report for the 12 months ended August 31st, 2019. Dr. Canales. Order for cease. This is a no-action item, and Mr. Sanchez will highlight some key points in the report. Mr. Nieto, Dr. Canales, members of the board. With the 12 months ended August 31, 2019, in the general fund of $175,738,542 budgeted, we have uh, so far recorded as earned $168,209,557. That represents 95.72%. These figures are not audited or unadjusted. We're still waiting for the, uh, for another month of activity to make sure that we record everything. And then the auditors will come up with the final numbers. On the expenditures in the general fund for the same 12 months, we have budgeted 178287191 And we have spent or encumbered $160,064,053. That represents 89.78%. We still need to accrue the payroll for the teachers that work two, within two and three weeks in uh, August. 
that has been recorded as expenditures besides everything else that might come up that was received or uh, services that were rendered by August 31. Also in the revenues, I didn't mention on the ADA for the week of school, we're gonna have some ADA revenue that we need to accrue as well. So that's not reflected here yet. Okay. I missed that. The ADA, what on the On the ADA, on the revenue that we have on the top, we have 174 million seven hundred and ninety-eight thousand. We still have to record one week of ADA state revenues for the week of school that we had. It hasn't been recorded yet. <clears throat> Do you all have any questions? Any questions on my right side? No questions. <clears throat> None? All right. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Thank you. Item B, acknowledgement of Hidalgo County Tax Office Collection Report, August 2019, current Texas and the liquid Texas, uh, oh, Mr. Sanchez. That is no report. We did not get the report from the county, so we don't have anything to report. So no action? Yes. Okay. Item 11, discussion and possible action items. Item A, discussion of possible action on nominating candidate or candidates to serve on the Hidalgo County Appraisal District Board of Directors for 2020-21 and approval of a resolution for a nomination. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, I recommend that you discuss and possibly nominate, nominate from one to five candidates to serve in the Hidalgo County Appraisal District Board of Directors for 2020-2021 and to approve the resolution for nomination. Wesico ISD has a total of 155 votes which can all be cast for one candidate or distributed among the candidates that will be nominated and named on the ballot. You do have a list of current board members for the appraisal districts, and um, the presiding officer of the unit submits the names of the nominee by written resolution to the chief appraiser before October 16th. I make a motion to nominate David Hernandez and uh, Joe uh, Olivares as uh, our nominees. Second. Do we have to have a second since we're nominated? Yes, second it. Yes, second. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Lopez and a second by Mr. Gonzalez <coughs> to nominate uh, Mr. Olivares and Mr. David Hernandez uh, to serve on the Hidalgo County Appraisal District Board of Directors for 2021. Any discussion? Now, out of the 155, can we just split those 155 to both candidates? That's, I want, yeah, I was going to ask for a clarification how you would like to split yeah, the 155. Have. So you all, uh, does he have to amend his? I would, I would just amend the motion. The motion yeah, I would amend my motion to say that I will uh, use our points and, and distribute them evenly between the two candidates, David Hernandez and Joe Olivares. Second. Okay. So we have a motion by uh, amended motion by Mr. Lopez to for the candidates to receive half and half. Even though it's an odd number, I believe it's what's the number? One needs to get seventy-six, and one needs to get seventy-eight. Seventy-seven, 77, 77 and 78. One will get 78 and one will get 77? Are you okay with that? Yes. Either Mr. one. It doesn't matter, yes. All right, so we have a motion for... Uh, what, what, I, what I would say is clarify who's getting 78 and who's getting okay. 77. I will clarify and say that David Hernandez will get the, the, the more points. Okay, 78. And uh, the new guy will get 77. Okay. So we have a motion. That's an amended motion to get a second on it. Second. All right, so we have an amended motion. We have Mr. Lopez and Mr. second by Mr. Gonzalez for David Hernandez to receive 78 of the 155 votes and Mr. Olivares to receive 77. Any discussion? Thank you, All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item B. Discussion of possible action for the board to consider approval of a proposal award for a specific and aggregate stop loss insurance for a self funded medical RX employee benefit plan RFP number 190843. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, uh, Valley Risk Consulting evaluated the proposals for us. A best and final request was sent to both vendors after careful evaluation of both proposals. Valley Risk Consulting is recommended proposal submitted by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield's offer has a higher premium of approximately 675482 annually. However, Blue Cross Blue Shield proposal includes no laser or aggregating deductibles. 
the incumbent's proposal includes a falling laser and aggregating deductibles. Claimant one, RX excluded from stop loss coverage. Claimant two, 500,000, laser contended upon transplant and combined adjusted deductible of 1,475,000 for claimant three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we are recommending Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas through Jeff Effort and Associates for specific and aggregate stop loss insurance for the district's self-funded employee benefit program. We do have Valley Risk Consulting here, Mr. Garza and Mr. De La Russa, if you should have any questions. Can y'all explain laser? Yes, Mr. Gonzalez. Laser is a commonly used term in the industry that basically identifies one individual. So we have a, or individuals, plural. So we have a $125,000 deductible um, per individual. Uh, so when they name specific individuals, they'll say, okay, well, it's $125,000 for everybody, but this one individual is, say, $500,000. And that's a laser? That's, that's, we would call it a laser, yes, sir. And, oh. and with that laser, um, I feel like Dr. Evil, laser. Uh, that laser is because this person has uh, uh, some kind of a medical condition that has increased costs, and so the, I guess the insurance company doesn't want to pay for it? You're correct. Is that what it is? Okay. In a nutshell, yes. Okay. Mike, do you have an idea or a number as to what the lasers for this year cost the district? Uh, I can get that information for you. Um, last year, for this, or for this past year, we had an aggregating deductible of uh, $275,000, which means that all claim we would not get paid on anything until we hit that $275,000 aggregating deductible first. And we did have another individual whose uh, RX was excluded uh, from the coverage. So it's an individual that's taken very expensive medication, obviously. So, But I can get you a detailed breakdown and put yeah. in the update. Okay. But you still feel that it's worth the, the risk or, or the, the increase? It's eight hundred thousand dollar difference, Mike. This basically, uh, the Blue Cross offers had no lasers whatsoever. You feel comfortable? Yes. With that so the one twenty five, no matter whom it is in the district. That's correct. So do you think this is a better deal for the district? Yes. Uh, and why is that? I mean, I kind of get the mm -hmm. gist of it, but I just want the public to know what what the purpose is of your recommendation. Right. So even though the premium and the premium is going to be higher. Uh, we're going to end up paying if those claimants uh, do have, you know, with the with the lasers, with the one individual that has a five hundred thousand dollar deductible, and then all the other ones at a one point four seven five million dollar, kind of like aggregating deductible. So, if we went with the other vendor, yes, we'd be paying less up front, but we'd be paying more on the back end as far as claims. So we're we're literally buying more insurance is what we're doing. I see. We're trying to avoid the higher deductibles on the back end. Correct. Okay. So at least we can know we can budget. We can say this is how much it's going to cost us per employee per month versus kind of hoping and waiting. Well, hopefully this, you know, individual does nothing, you know, doesn't, you know, incur these high costs. So how do you put a value on knowing who's going to have a substantial claim like that? We, we know. I mean, we, we, we've identified these individuals. I can't say much more in, in public, but we know we've identified these individuals and more than likely, yes, the, the trend is uh, we're going to continue to incur these costs okay. with them. Any comments on my right side or questions? So lasers are not a good thing or a bad thing? Not a good thing when it comes to, to so black stop lasers. insurance. Yes. All right. Besides you and Roger, who else evaluated this? Uh, Roger and I, sir. Yeah, that, that was all. Motion to approve. I'll second. So here we have a motion by Dr. Rivera and a second by Mr. Lopez to approve the proposal award for specific, specific and aggregate stop loss insurance for self-funded medical RX employee benefit plan. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Close meeting to discuss, uh, which one? oh, my fault. Item number C, discussion of possible action for the board approve for West ISD to submit a request for a class size limit exemption waiver. Dr. Canales. Board of Trees, this is something that we're allowed to do. Uh, the state re has a 22 to one student ratio for K through fourth grade. Uh, we have two campuses that are over by one student and due to unpredictable enrollment, in some cases we considered talking to the parents, but it would mean splitting up the children, the family. 
So it's two children that we're talking about right now. We want to apply for a waiver. The, the state does allow you to apply for a waiver to increase the uh, racial to uh, 24 to 1. We're asking for just uh, third grade at Sam Houston Elementary School. So one of the teachers would have 23 students instead of 22, the max of 22, and a memorial for second grade where one of the second grade classrooms would have 23 instead of 22 students. Is that correct? And again, we're not splitting up the family by we're not applying up, for this waiver? Right. And when it, I know that there's a family involved on one campus. I'm not too sure about both. I mean, only motion two to approve. It's two, it's two, it would be two classrooms. We're applying okay. for two student waivers second. at the state. I second Mr. Gonzalez's motion. Okay. So we have a motion by Mr. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. Kennedy to approve uh, West Coast East to submit a request for a class size limit exemption waiver. Any discussion? Is just this, uh, just two schools? It's the two, correct? Two the schools. Lunch. It's element, it applies to elementaries and it's two that we are submitting. No. <clears throat> that is correct, Dr. No, no other school, just these two. That is correct. And 24 would be your maximum? Yes, sir. And what grade uh, did you say, what, Dr. Uh, third grade at second. Sam Houston and second grade at Memorial. But you're getting more kids enrolled just about every day. So would that affect just those two teachers or other, as you, as you grow in the enrollment? Yes, sir. Would it and, affect others? And uh, right now we've been studying the, the trends at the elementaries and we feel comfortable with the recruitments where we'll be able to fill them. We just, due to the unpredictable open enrollment and uh, grow, it, we just don't want to split the families and that's what we're working with right now. So we're just two teachers or just the all fourth graders? Right now we're looking at the fourth grader, for, excuse me, for the grade level, for third grade. Oh, okay, and all the third for, grade then? Yes. So you might keep on putting kids in there? Correct. Uh, not good practice. Yeah, the, wa the waiver that we're submitting to the state will read uh, like this. It would have third grade at Sam Houston uh, one and memorial at second grade one. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. It's, it's for whole, that one teacher. It's a whole grade. No, no, I, I apologize. It's for just, that one teacher. Just okay. one teacher? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And not to exceed, like you mentioned, the, the 24 to 1. I'm sorry, I misunderstood the question. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to exceed 24 to 1. We're two teachers. Yes, sir. Okay. So if more come in, Where we, we, you, some, yes. you can hire another teacher. If more kids come in. Correct. And we've been working closely. I just want to make sure that we don't go over 24 or stay no. 24 for all third graders or all whatever grade it is. I don't want to give you a green light to keep on putting kids in their campuses. I'm not in favor of waivers. Okay. But you said that this is only for two separate incidents or two teachers, correct? That is correct. Now, uh, one of the, the things. Whole, not the whole grade level. No, one teacher. Okay. One teacher. <laughs> and one of the things that I do want to add is we have until the October the 1st or within the 30 days from when we started. So if there happens to take place that we do have an opening at, at, the, at that campus for that teacher, we can go ahead and uh, we don't have to apply for that waiver. If, if the space allows where we can accommodate, then right. we can just close it out from there. And, that, and I think Dr. Rivera was uh, mm -hmm. saying that if we had more students, then there's a possibility that that particular campus might get another extra teacher. Correct, Correct. Dr. Rivera? Mm -hmm. Now, Abel is, is a practice, or Dr. Canales, the mm -hmm. question is for you. If the increase of enrollment happens, do we have other campuses where we can redirect those children where we don't go over the 22 to 1? Yes, yes sir, we, we do. do, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anybody actually we can send to those campuses? Yes, sir. And won't affect the teachers that we're requesting the waiver for so that we won't split up right. these Right, any families. new enrollments. Mm -hmm. Got it. We can do and we're currently right doing that with HR, Ms. Segura. We're rerouting, you know, okay. as, as we're closing. But that's kind of unfair if you have a, a kid that's been there three or four years, and now because it's full, You'll send it to another campus. We're you working have migrants with them. who come in. They were there four or five years, and now all of a sudden they're going to a different school. We're working on, on uh, better practices to make sure we secure those seats during the registration process, and, and that's something that we have been discussing, and, and we are discussing that internally with our with our uh, campus principals to see how we can best minimize that. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Gonzalez, a second by Mr. Kennedy uh, 
to approve the or submit a request for class size limit exemption waiver. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. No discussion. We did that when was it was discussed. Question. Did you have something else? I just had uh, one, one more question. Okay. Uh, this is just for, for that one school, right? Two schools, Sam Houston and Memorial. And uh, if you need more waivers, you got to come back again? Yes. Yes, we do right. have to bring it, but hopefully we're trying to work it out or okay. we can stabilize to it. Reroute them to, other, to reroute to other campuses for newly enrolled students. Yeah. Um, and just because third grade at Sam Houston is maxed right now and second grade at Memorial is maxed right now, it doesn't mean that all grade levels are at that campus. Right. And then so we try rerouting to a near campus that has room for that grade level. And uh, if needed, once we re reach a certain number, and we did that already, we've, uh, we've already moved teachers to campuses that had significant growth in certain grade, grade levels, while others maybe did not. Okay. Uh, so we'll watch this carefully and support the teachers with that extra student. Yeah. Go ahead, Coach. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I'm not convinced that, that it's going to stop here. That has me concerned. You know, we're we're being uh, in a situation where we want to be, you know, in a position where we're 22 to one, and you know how competitive it is. You know, uh, as a school district, we we, we say we're going to do what's best for our students. You know, I want to make sure that we we provide that. You know, and we and we we deliver. I've been in that in, in a situation where I'm in a classroom and and you start the year with X number of students and you, and you anticipate what you're going to get, but they keep coming in, they keep coming in, and planning becomes more and more difficult. And then it becomes a little unfair to the majority of the students because now you're accommodated. And, and when, when, when do you stop to catch up and not fall behind with the ones that have been there from, from the get-go? So. Again, the question was, you have one classroom at one campus and one classroom right now. Is it going to stop there or is this going to continue? And I mean, it's, it's good that, that we're getting numbers, but we're going to take care of those numbers. Yes, sir. I don't want to overload classrooms. That is correct. And very good point, uh, Mr. Cuero. So one of the things that we're studying right now, especially with our recruitment process, when we're going out there, we're identifying the campuses that do have the availability right now. So we don't want to mislead when we're recruiting and saying, come back to Wessico, we want our students back, and then we go to that specific campus that's already closed, and that causes a problem. So we're, we're being very strategic with that to identify where we have the space, and we want to communicate that to the families. So that's what we're working on right now. And uh, the uh, just a recent from HR was sent out, the re, uh, redistricting the students, excuse me, sending them to the campus where, where the, it's full already, we're sending them to alternate campuses. So we're keeping eyes on that on, on a daily basis. We're, we're, we're starting to see those trends going back and forth. With the open enrollment um, and the projections that were coming in, you know, we just had an increase at those two campuses, you know, from the beginning. And we don't want to turn anyone away, so we were registering. It just so happened that right there, you know, we just, we're, we went over we're on those two. one extra. One extra. On those gray levels. But Mr. Guaya, too, when, if we want to, you know, if we have to honor the 22 to 1 for those grade levels. It's K through fourth grade, correct? Correct. And we honor the fifth grade. We added fifth grade. We've been doing that for a number of years in our district. So if there was another one that came in, any future waivers for any grade level, any other campus would need to come to the board for approval. So we can't just go over 22 to 1 because we, we want to. We need to have a, a waiver. And these two campuses, from what I understand, it's siblings that would be split. And so we want to keep the families together at uh, one campus. So one's Memorial and one's Sam Houston. Okay, so we're really taking care of the families so we don't have to split them. That's my understanding. Is that correct? Principals that correct. were okay with the movement there or the... I think they wanted to keep the, the one child. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've discussed it with the principals. Yeah. Perfect. So we have a motion by Mr. Gonzalez, a second by Mr. Kennedy submit a request for a class size limit exemption waiver uh, we finished with discussion for the second time mm -hmm. yeah, so <laughs> all in favor please say aye aye, aye. all opposed aye against 
Uh, motion carries. I'm, I'm with the, all in favor. Thank you. All right. Can you hire some pairs for the ones that are over? Dr. Canales. Oh, we can take, we can look at it some further and offer support to the teacher who's going to have 23, we'll have right? Correct. Jesus okay, well, this discussion needs to end on the item. We're, we're Correct, because it's not we've already voted on it. What? We've, we've, the, the vote has been taken, and, and we need to move on to the next item. Yes, sir. All right, close committee to discuss. Uh, First, Mr. President, right quick, we okay. did, you pulled item X from yes. consent agenda. Was that going to be a no action item? I just want the minutes to be clear, or is that going to be something taken up for discussion? It was a no action. No action. Correct, Andres? No action. Okay. Okay. Post meeting to discuss personal matters, employment of personnel, resignations, deliberation regarding the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee. Item B, deliberation regarding acquisition of real property. Item C, consultation with attorney regarding or pending contemplated litigation, settlement offer in a matter which the duty of the attorney to the West ISD under Texas disciplinary rules of professional conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Texas Government Code 551071. Item D, student discipline, Texas Government Code 551082551821. And it is deliberation and consultation with parent regarding transfer of student alleged to have engaged in bullying pursuant to Texas Education Code 250342B1 and 2. It is 7.34 and we're gonna go into closed session. We reconvene an open meeting at 852. Uh, let the record reflect that uh, Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Gonzalez left at 850. Possible action and necessary and items discussed in closed meeting. <coughs> Item one, discussion and possible action on new employment. Dr. Gonzalez. Board of Trustees, I move that you approve the recommendation of contracts for certified professional personnel as discussed in closed session. So move. Second. We have a motion by Dr. Jaime and a second by Mr. Lopez on uh, approval of new employment. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item number two, discussion of possible action on resignations? No, no action. action. No action. No action. Okay. Item number three, uh, discussion of possible action on acquisition of real property? No action. No Item number four. Uh, discussion of possible action regarding transfer of student alleged to have engaged in bullying. Dr. Canales, or uh, do I have a motion? Motion. Uh, no action taken. No action. We, we need a motion for this. So you would need a motion to take action. If there's no motion, then the, the, the item dies. There's no action on it. No action. Correct. In, no okay. motion. Then. No motion. So we have a no action on uh, item number four. Correct? Correct. Adjournment. So move. So move. It is 855.